All right, thank you all for being here. Um, it's been a while, and uh, kind of do that on on purpose. I know I did a, a podcast and maybe one radio deal, but I think head coach fatigue's real for uh, probably for you all. I know it is for our team sometimes, um, so I don't get up and preach to our guys much during the winter either. Um, but good to be back in front of you. Um, we've had a productive winter. Uh, really give a lot of credit to our support areas. I think. As we've progressed as a program, um, I think one of the real strengths of our of what we've been able to do and is is in our support, strength conditioning, nutrition, sports science, recovery, athletic training, those in sports psych, those have become real strengths of ours. And over the last nine weeks is is that group has really led uh, what we've been able to do. Uh, when you see our guys, um, I think uh, Monty will talk to you, but on Wednesday when you all are able to get out and see it, you're going to you're going to notice some significant differences in bodies, uh, some body composition, some body weights, um, and that's a credit to that group. You know they they've done a really good job. The way we break it down is I think I've said this to you before, but we go winter, and you know that's a really an eight to nine week phase. Um, then we go into spring ball, which is five five weeks, and get a break during May, then we come back, got another eight week summer session. The summer is very similar to what we're doing in the winter. And then that leads us into, into fall camp and then of course into the season. So that's kind of how we break up the year. Um, spring, I, I've told you all this every year. I think I've been here. It's one of my favorite times. It's a, it's a great opportunity to teach. Um, you, don't, you don't have the, the pressure really getting prepared for a, for a game. And so, um, you know, practices, you're not going back to back. Um, and so, um, it's always been one of my favorite times. Um, I'll kind of give you like what we're kind of focused on that we've been talking about within uh, within our team to give you an idea. Um, we finished up the winter really uh, the week before spring. Last week was spring break for the university. Our guys had off. We finished our winter program, and we're using this buffer week. If you notice, we're going one week later than what we normally do in the spring, and the reason is is we came back uh, the last two previous years. And we've gone from spring break and we've practiced right, I think, on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week. And we had some soft tissue injuries. So looking back, you always look back, hey, what went well, what didn't go well in the previous year. So one thing that we had noted, uh, Mike and I, is we really need to do kind of a buffer week. So that's why that's why everything slid back a week, is really um, this week we're kind of getting in the flow um, for spring ball. So that's why we're going a week later. Um, really what our emphasis is, is really this is a teaching time for us, the, the spring period. We haven't done a ton of football leading into spring ball. And really what we want to teach is guys how to, how to meet, walk through, and then practice uh, as we prepare for, for the season. Um, we, really a lot of competition, uh, especially on the special team side. We're going to do that um, where we divide the entire team into four groups. I think y'all y'all followed that. Where we'll have four captains, and we'll do special teams competition, and then a lot of competition both positionally and then offense versus defense. Um, this is this is a real focus on fundamentals. You know, I think we made a strides last year. Uh, we've got to continue to grow. In one area, we've really got to do that is is from a fundamental perspective. We we get schemes, repetitions, and what we're trying to do is we're preparing for the season. So. Uh, we're going to install our base offense, our base defense, our base special team schemes, and then try to rep it not only versus look that that for for our defense that our offense presents, but things that they're going to see down the road in the season. Same on offense, not just against the defensive looks that we're that we're teaching, but also try to prepare them for where they're going to see as we get especially into Big 12 play. And then it's a it's in a personnel evaluation. You know, we need to see we're not necessarily going to come out of this with who the starters are going to be, but we need to find out who we can count on. And then if we need to move guys around. And then especially on defense, what some of our sub packages look like. So and then we need to stay healthy. You know, I had a couple uh, injuries last spring and you know, we need to avoid those at all costs. I think some a lot of some of that's on us as as coaches and and with Mike. Uh, as far as making sure we're practicing the right way, and then some of that's on our players as well to make sure they're taking care of their bodies and to make sure they're staying off the ground, et cetera, uh, when we practice. Uh, we've got new guys that are here. I think you all know. I just want to quickly kind of kind of tell you that because you'll probably ask. Um, you know, Israel Boyce um, will play safety. Nate Gabriel is going to be at our nose. 
Uh, Zay, Zay Jennings is going to play both our spear and our safety. We'll kind of dual train him. Elijah Kinsler will play D tackle. Um, o, uh, OB is going to be at our uh, at our spur position, our bandit. And then Samarco will play tight end. And then uh, Clay Ash is also here uh, from uh, from Leesburg, Virginia. He'll be a running back for us. Um, Xavier Bosley is going to play tackle. Jaden Bray, we're going to move him around. He'll play a little bit all over, uh, but primarily be an outside receiver. Uh, Reed Carrico is playing the mic for us. Uh, TJ Crandall will be at corner. Uh, Ty French is going to play, again, the spur bandit position. Um, Aiden Garns, we're going to train him really at all three positions. Uh, he'll primarily play corner, but we're going to teach him spur. In our, and then he can play some deep safety as well. Uh, Garnet Hollis is here, um, and he'll go, he'll go through spring. Uh, he'll be a corner uh, for us. Really excited about his addition. Uh, T.J. Jackson uh, is going to play both of our D-line positions. He'll play the field end and the boundary end. Um, and then Jaheim Joseph, who is, is also here. And he's going to – we'll dual trade him at both deep safety and at the spear position too. So um, those are guys that y'all are probably going to ask about, so I wanted to make sure I hit on that. A couple other things I wanted to hit before I turn it over to Greg and questions. Um, I want to wish women's basketball the best, man. Uh, excited for them. Uh, I really enjoyed watching them play. Um, I hope we can defend like they defended this year. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And uh, so I want to re uh, wish Coach Kellogg and those, guys, uh, and those women uh, the best of luck in the tournament. And then uh, wrestling. Wrestling's had a tremendous year. So Coach Flynn and those guys, I know they're at the Nationals, so I want to wish them good luck. Um, I'll hit a couple other things at the end, but I'll turn it over to Greg. Questions? So, tons of questions, but to start with injuries. You, had, you mentioned you had a bunch spring, then through the last year, some significant ones. Yep. How are they coming back? Anybody who's not going to be able to practice this spring as they recover from off-season stuff, whatever? Yeah, so what I'll try to do, I'll try to hit these. And if you have questions, anybody that has questions about injured guys, y'all just ask them right now. So, I'm just going to go down the list. Bryce Biggs will be limited. He'll be out there. You'll see him when you're there on Wednesday. Um, Thomas Remack will miss. He had off-season surgery. He'll miss the spring. Um, he'll be a little bit more active as we go, but we're going to keep him out of practice. Uh, Cole Taylor had off-season surgery. He'll be limited. He'll be out there running around, but he will not have contact. Um, Trey Lathan's back full. He'll practice full this spring. Uh, Josiah Trotter will practice full this spring. C.J. Donaldson will be limited. As you know, he had off-season surgery before the bowl game. He'll kind of progress as we go through the spring. Um, Asani Redwood is probably the one that y'all don't know about. He had to have some late um, late work on his shoulder. He'll miss the spring. He'll be back in the summer, though. Uh, Orion Fisher, who had um, a knee surgery during bowl prep, he'll miss the spring. And then Jai Favaris will miss the spring. Um, and then I, did I say Biggs? Biggs? I think I said Biggs first. Um, anybody else that y'all had questions about? That's pretty much everybody, right? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, follow up with any. You mentioned a couple guys switching positions or maybe cross training. Any position changes? You know, corner playing safety, offense to defense. Anything um, of note? Really? No. What we're trying to do is from uh, in the spring, we're going to cross train. Like offensive line wise, um, we're going to move those guys around quite a bit. You know, you'll even, when you come out to and, and see practice, you'll see Wyatt taking some some center and guard reps. Just got to think it's important, you know, where he's going to play at the next level. He has some film on that. Uh, so he'll do that. Um, we're going to move Nick Cray around a good bit. Uh, Cooper Young um, is going gonna, is gonna to move around as well. Um, and then um, receiver-wise, just training all those guys how to play all three positions. You know, uh, Jane Bray's our only newcomer there, so there's a lot of carryover. And so we want to train them there. Then defensively <clears throat> is I talked about Aiden Garns. Um, the other thing is Montre Miller's back. He'll be full – I forgot – he'll be full speed during the spring. Excited about him. He had a great winter. Uh, he'll be back. And then – you know, in the secondary wise, just we've got – this is the deepest we've been, and we may even continue to add to that room, but it's the deepest we've been. Um, we're going to play um, Aubrey some more at Spear. You know, he played a little bit there in the bowl game, 
And so we've used him there in some sub packages, but we're going to continue to dual train him. And he'll get – he'll probably get more reps playing spear than he will at deep safety during the spring. Um, talked about – let me see here. I just want to make sure I hit any of these. That's really it from a position standpoint. Nobody else is really – we're not really changing positions as much as just dual training some guys. Any additional turnover? I know Portal can't open right now, but any guys that aren't with the program? Not right now. I'm sure it'll change. <laughs> but no, uh, not right. Not right. Not right now. No. Uh, we've had um, our group. Uh, we're we're in a good place. I like this group. It's it's been fun to work with them. Um, on purpose in January, I didn't go out on Mondays and Fridays until later. Um, just so I could be around them on Monday and Friday morning, myself and the coordinators. Um, and so there wasn't this big um, gap between when I was around them. And it, we're working at the highest capacity. Uh, we've got our best leadership um, that we've had. And so it's been a fun group to coach. It's, it's, a, it's a close group so far. We've got to continue. And this is – we've challenged them more in this offseason. We've challenged any group that we've had just because, you know, for us is it's about taking the next step. You know, nine wins in a bowl, how do you get that over the hump and be able to finish games where you can go play in Dallas? You know, and that's kind of the push for us is we've got to, we got to continue to get better and, and to get over the hump. Can you assess these um, recruiting areas for those guys? Yeah, so staff-wise, let me just talk in general about staff. And so defensively, you know, um, Jordan's moving to a where he can oversee – uh, he he's not going to have a position. And a couple of reasons behind that is I want him to be more involved with each of the groups. I think that will help him from a relationship standpoint. Um, and adding Vic, Vic Cabral, which I'm really excited about, he, he's he's coached in the style of defense that we're, that we're running. And he's been really productive. productive. His units have been really productive, uh, especially rushing the passer. And I think that's something that we've got to get better at. And one, our, our overall TFL number sacks have been pretty good, but we need to win more one-on-one -on -one situations. I think he'll really add to that. And then I wanted the secondary to be together. Um, and, and Jordan's going to help uh, Shadon with that. And, and we've got some you know, analysts and, and GAs that are really qualified. Um, but I wanted the secondary to be together primarily from a communication. You know, I wanted to make sure that that they were all hearing the same same uh, language and they were all on the same page. And so having Shadon use that entire group and then our GAs and, and Jordan, et cetera, can help them once we're on the field. But I felt it was really important for that group to meet together. And then offensively, um, you know, Tyler Allen earned, earned the promotion there. He's been – he's had an integral role in developing both – Garrett and Nico, and um, and he's helped us in recruiting, and he's ready for that. I'm excited for him. And then we brought Ryan Nealon back to to be in Tyler's old role, you know, as the as a my assistant and and really the analyst for offense. So from a recruiting perspective, Vic um, is really going to concentrate down in the Carolinas, uh, which is where he was at App. And that's where he recruited when he was at Georgia Southern as well. So he's got a lot of experience there. We've got some momentum down there in that area. You know, we've had quite a few of those kids up in January. Um, quite a few of them are, are kind of slotted to come for spring practice. Um, and I think the bowl game's a, a reason why. We were down there. Obviously, huge West Virginia presence there for the game. And I think that it kind of rekindled some interest. And in that's a large alumni base for us, too. So that's where he's going to be. Um, Tyler will primarily focus on quarterbacks, and then um, we're doing a little. We're still shifting areas a little bit, and, but I'll get that. I'll, I'll make sure I. I'll kind of talk where we've kind of moved those moved those areas around to. I'm just making a note. You mentioned and double check. Hollis and Joseph are here. They're here. So when yeah. did when did they get here? How do, how do you so, get a guy here? So, so we have we have a we have a spring. Um, I don't know what it's called. Uh, it starts in March. It's like a accelerated term. Uh, they both graduated, so um, at Northwestern they're a, they're on a quarter system, and so they graduated right there. So they finished up, and we were able to get them in to grad school here um, during the term for us. It starts in March. What's that called? A mini semester? Maybe I don't know. 
I mean, because they're – Oh, it'll help. Guys, yeah, well, those, those guys have played a ton of football. Mm -hmm. You know, they played a lot of football, and, and they've played quality football in a tough league. And so, without question, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't bring guys in that – had very low eligibility left less, unless we thought they could really help. And, and it will benefit them. It will benefit them for sure to be in the spring, be here during the spring. How, diff how different is it to go into a season without 14th place pick yep. to inspire your team? To tell them, and rather than tell them you're better than what people say you are, than to say this year you have to probably tell them you're not as good as you think you are. Yeah. You know what, Bob, and I, I'm not avoiding this at all, but – we really will get to that in the fall. Right now, to be honest, like I don't really talk to them about anything about what our expectations are or not. To me, it's about until we get to the end of the summer, then we'll start kind of leaning into to who you know to expectations and all that kind of stuff. To me, right now, it's just about just getting better, you know, because you got to you're around them in interviews and stuff. Like I'm around them at home and I'm around them here, teenagers, like and like. Long term is like next week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like we're a long way away from from that. Now what I would say is like, <clears throat> you know, I don't, my assumption is that we're not going to be picked first or second. You know, so like it's not like that we're going to have these humongous expectations on us. So like we're still going to be in a prove it mode, um, but we won't we won't start talking about any of that stuff till we get till we get closer to the games, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Here's the thing. It's just about urgency, you know. And um, and so that's – when I talk about um, – we'll, we'll have a countdown clock, and we won't necessarily talk about what Penn State's doing or the fact that um, – but it'll be really relevant because, you know, everybody assumes, man, like it's just a long way off, but then you start putting the days down. So we start every team meeting starting on Monday when we start spring practice. It'll have – the number of days left in spring and the and number of days until we play Penn State. Um, and we just do that so they understand there's some urgency here. You know, we're not like easing into it. You know, here they come. Mike. Yeah, so kind of on a similar note of what Bob's talking about, how is even starting this spring different for you than even the last couple of years, but certainly last year when it's more of, of players returning that you're – Know, glad to have mm -hmm. back, and then there's not as much of a comp. There are position competitions, obviously, but Green's the leader of the team. He's the QB one. We started spring last year where you're already looking at a QB mm -hmm. competition. How is that different for you as a coach? Is that easier? Is that harder? Is that different for the players? Or is it just yeah. similar thing? No, so I think that's, you know, I talked about this is by far the most production we've returned and the most um, really uh, depth that we've returned uh, without question. And so, for us, it started in, in January, and that's why we've really pushed. Like, we got to do hard stuff better. And, and like, we've intentionally made this offseason extremely hard. And because, you know, we, the expectation levels have increased. They're going to increase outside the building, but they've also increased inside the building. And so we got to coach these guys harder. We got we to gotta put harder stuff in front of them. And so that's, that's kind of how we've, we've embraced it. Um, you know, I, 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 that's a quality question. I will say that. Um, mustache threw me off there, but like, uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I, I really like, it doesn't matter if what I like trajectory, right? And so it doesn't matter if I'm buying a stock or I'm buying anything, if I'm hiring people, like I want people on a trajectory, and hunger is really important. And so if you look at what we've tried to do from a staff standpoint is we've got systems that we believe in, and we don't want those systems to change. And you're going to have some personnel movements, player-wise, staff-wise. Um, I think the leadership in those positions is really important. And you don't have infinite money. Um, and so – you know, I think in those leadership positions, uh, they're going to get uh, financially compensated a little higher. And so when you bring in guys um, at lower levels, all right, you want to bring in guys that are extremely hungry 
all right? And they're extremely thankful for that opportunity, and they have a lot of growth in them. And so when we start, whether we're hiring an assistant strength staff member or we're hiring uh, somebody in an off-the-field role or somebody on an on-field role, is that's what we're looking for, you know? And, and so if you look at Vic, I think his trajectory is going up. And he's been at G5 programs, but he's been at highly successful G5 programs. Um, and he's hungry. And with Vic, you know, too, is really one of the things that, that we did a nice job hiring last year offensively with Bilal and Blaine is younger guys, um, but their day-to-day -day energy is really consistent, and that's who they are. And when we flipped to morning practices, and, and I didn't know this. This wasn't the reason that we hired them by any means, but a byproduct of when we moved to morning practices now, like our guys start their day with us. You know, in the past when they, we practiced in the afternoons in the season, is there was a whole lot of stuff that went down before they got to our position meetings or our unit meetings. Now they're the, the, the how we start, they, our, each of our players start their day in this building. And having those positive, energetic people in, in our offensive unit meetings and in those position rooms really positively affected our offense. And I wanted to add that to our defensive side, but it has to be authentic, it can't be fake. And you're going to get a chance. I don't know. One day next week, y'all are going to get a chance to sit down with him. And you're going to, that's one of the things that's going to really jump out to you is he has this natural energy about it. And people are genuinely drawn to him. And he'll be able to connect not just with the outside linebackers he's coaching, but with our entire defensive unit. Um, so I'm excited about that aspect for him. Being a part of that, your, your path, just you were at a group of five before West Virginia. So it's almost they kind of connect to you a little bit with your um, hunger. I probably, you know, I, I like people in general that um, haven't had a silver spoon in coaching. You know, I think that, um, and what I mean by that is I like that people that have worked their way up, that doesn't mean that everybody has to do that to be a successful coach, you know. Like you did. Yeah, yeah, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm really, because I, trust me, y'all point out my lot, like I have plenty of flaws, right? <laughs> and so I'm not really trying to, trying to hire people that are exactly on the same path I am. But I do like I do like hiring individuals that have not had the easiest path, and because when you have jobs at a D two or FCS level, and then you go up to G five, like you how to you learn how to do more with less, and you have to do more things um, earlier in your career, and you a lot of the best on, the best training in my opinion is on the job training. Um, like I'm so thankful my first full time job was at Sacred Heart which at the time, they've done a really good job as a program. They've grown, but at the time was non-scholarship uh, FCS football. And I had to do a whole lot, you know, and, and I was messing up and nobody really knew, you know, media in-house or out of, you know, they didn't really know. And so, but what I, I probably learned more in that little under a year where I had that job than probably any job I've had. And so I like people that have kind of learned on the job and kind of moved up and progressed up the levels. Um, obviously an in-state kid. What really stood out to you and your staff about him coming in and then what excites you about him this spring? Yeah, it's talking about Xavier first. I want to send my condolences to his mom. They lost, uh, she lost her mother and his grandmother and and so uh, I want to let the family know we're thinking about them. Um, so Xavier's came in here and he's gone to work. You know, he had a lot of, a lot of success at his last place, was a freshman All-American and um, the credit for him goes, because we recruited him really hard. We really, uh, you know, we recruited him really hard to uh, to um, be a be a walk on, be a preferred walk on in our program. Um, and um, you know, Rick Trickett really believed in him, offered him down there, and, and Rick Rick does a great job. I think that's been well documented. He's he's done a great job everywhere he's been. And Xavier Xavier went to him. And credit to him, he changed his body, man. He, he really looks a lot different now than he did, um, you know, finishing his junior year in high school. And so he's got a lot of length. Uh, he's got to continue to get stronger. Um, you know, we feel strongly he's going to play tackle. Um, and he's going to be in the mix. You know, he'll be in the mix, and he's going to get a ton of reps. And um, we feel like he's going to be a, have, a, have the opportunity to be a great player for us. Being a 3-4 and kind of having to grow into that, um, just 
through off-season development, the portal, feel like you've made steps there closer to your goal, your ideal? Yeah, we are. You know, I, I, I hate it for Asani that he's going to miss because I think he's really on the cusp of kind of taking the next step. And he played his best game as a Mountaineer in the bowl game. He played really well in the bowl game. Um, I think we probably need maybe one or two more bodies in that room. Um, but I think we're going into it. If you looked at the guys just like that are in this freshman class that like Elijah Kinsler, who's here, you know, um, we're going to play him at the uh, at the boundary. And he's a guy that's, you know, 6'4 ish, that he's long, 275, 285. That's kind of the prototype there. And then, you know, obviously Sean is a really good fit to the field. And then, you know, TJ Jackson, maybe not as tall as, as you like, but super active and been really productive. Um, I think we've got a solid core there at nose too. We want a big human beings at that at that nose spot, and we've got uh, three. Uh, the one person I'm really excited about watching in the spring is Corey McIntyre in that room. Like um, we played him some in the bowl game, and he's got twitch and he's really worked hard. I think he's he's going to be a for sure factor for us. Um, but we're working toward that. We're probably uh, maybe one class away from being exactly what we need to be as far as numbers wise and um, you know size wise for playing the three four. Um, did I answer did I answer that there, Mike? The whole like the no, front, levels. Yes, front. You know, I think that we've got to continue um, like uh, Ty French was a great addition for us. Uh, Tyron Bradley, you know, kind of feeding off what I said about Asani Redwood. He played his best game here in the bowl game. And he's had a tremendous winner. I think he's ready for the next step. Uh, we've got to grow that depth at Spur because we're asking them to drop a little bit more maybe than we did when we were more of a four down frontish uh, the first four years. Um, and so we've got to continue to probably grow that room as well. Inside linebackers, inside linebackers, mm -hmm. your bandits, your bandit. Is that going to be like a well, or? To one to a certain extent. So the inside linebackers – have changed a little bit because what we've gone to is basically playing two mic bodies. Okay, even though they're labeled Mike and Will, they're really more mic bodies because um, we were we were having much more success recruiting those type of bodies than we were like the really athletic long Will bodies because you don't there's just not a ton of them out there. Um, and so, you know, if you look at the linebackers, which is this is by far the most depth we've had, is we feel like you know. There's upwards of, you know, five, six guys that are going to be able to play for us at those positions. And they're guys that maybe are a little more boxy. Some of them are long, some of them aren't. But they're downhill players, um, and they fit into that scheme because we're, well, we're asking them to play tackle to tackle. You know, with uh, the holes out for the whole spring, that seems like it would really open up for the other tight ends to – yeah, well, those guys need to need to take a step, you know. Uh, Will Dixon, like that's this is an important spring for him, you know. Um, Jack Samarco is a is a high school player that's coming in. He's going to get more opportunities. Um, you know, Traylon Davis. We want to be careful, kind of know what he is. Like he's changed his body this winter, um, and so he was really productive for us last year. Um, but I think he can take another step. Um, but you know, you have so many hits in you. All right, and we want to make sure that we're going to use some of those productive hits that when he's blocking, we want to use those in the fall, not necessarily in the spring. Um, but I think the guy that I'm that I'm really intrigued by watching is Will Dixon this uh, this spring. Can I, can I just verify it? Mm -hmm. Is Cole definitely out all spring? Or is he he's gonna he's going to be out. He'll pra he'll he'll be able to do some non-contact stuff, but he's not going to be in pads. Okay, I thought you said limited. And what I mean is, like, he'll be able to – he'll progress to doing some routes on air and doing some individual stuff. So, you'll see him out there running around in his jersey, but he's not going to be um, in, in full gear by any means. Josiah Trotter, you mentioned he's going to be pulling. Mm -hmm. Is that a guy you're excited to see? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's probably is is bigger recruits we've had here. And so, um, I really believe that he would have been a significant factor for us last fall as a true freshman if he didn't get injured. And so, um, and it's been fun to watch, you know, like obviously he comes from um, a strong background with his father and his brother, um, but he's prepared. Last year he prepared like he was playing every week, even though he was clearly going to miss the season. And so I know he's probably inching to get back on the field as much as anybody in our program. 
with, yeah, the, go. with the spear. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned possibly playing Aubrey there. Who else is in the mix there, Joseph? And yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna uh, rally Collins back. Had his best um, winner. We're gonna play. You know, we're gonna move some guys around um, doing that. Um, you know, Zay Jennings can play a little bit. Avery Wilcox is gonna be down there. We're gonna, you know, when we get into our dime stuff, it'll be another corner that moves in. And so, just going to really try to find, like, who are the best guys. And, and where I'm excited to see Aubrey down there is because he's proven that he can come off the edge and blitz. You know, and we weren't as good at that last year, you know. Uh, when Taiki was here, he really did a nice job with that. We used him because he was really productive off the edge. Um, but we really haven't that, had that blitzer. But Aubrey's got a really kind of a natural feel for that. And so I think that can be a bump to if, if, if we can do that. Garrett and Nico, what do, you, what do you ask them to do this spring? I mean, areas they need to improve. Yeah. Um, and I'll say this, too. I, I mentioned Xavier. And, and Garrett, Garrett lost his grandfather at the end of last week. And so uh, that's his dad's dad. And, and they were really close. So Garrett's actually going to miss our first practice. He, he won't be here on Monday because he's going to his grandfather's funeral in, in Miami. So um, again, our, our, our thoughts are with his family. Um, for Garrett, it's all about accuracy, you know, and um, he he's done a great job this this uh, this winter uh, with our people here, but also with his his quarterback coach that he works with um, on his own, and it, he's got to get his feet in a better position. You know, some things that we really knew what the issue was last fall, um, but those things aren't getting you can't fix those in a week. You know, it's a and we really, what we did at the start of January, we really kind of attacked this as a nine month. Like we had played the last, you know, whatever, last couple of days in August. So we've got that whole time to get ready. And there's going to be some ups and downs, you know, because he's changing some things with, with, with his feet and some of his arm angles and things like that. Um, so we knew it was going to be kind of playing the long game. Uh, but he's got to be more accurate. And, and I think he can. If you look at some of these guys that are in the draft class this year, you know, one guy that career who I've, who I've uh, uh, followed a bunch just because we may even been the first to offer him when I was at Troy is Bo Nix, you know. And and Bo made a significant jump in his completion percentage. And I think Garrett is, is, is fully capable of making a big jump, you know, in completion percentage. Um, so that's the that's the number one thing for him is, is continue not only to, to grasp what we're doing offensively and, and – but he's got to get his completion percentage better and then getting some of the touch throws down. Um, Nico is – it's a great opportunity for Nico because on Monday, because Garrett won't be here, so he's going to get a ton of reps. And we're going to be intentional about getting Nico a lot of the a lot of first team reps too. Um, and I'm, I'm – it's going to be like – he is much more comfortable, you know, as a college football player. Like playing that position is really hard. You know, and sometimes it happens really fast for people, um, and sometimes it takes a little time. And it's and it's taking some time for him. You know, he's still undefeated as starter. He's he's done some good things, but um, it's taking a little bit of time. And um, but just understanding defenses and understanding schematically what we're doing, not only in the pass game but in the run game, he's much more comfortable. Um, and I think he's a little bit more at ease because he's more confident, and so he's not. Um, doesn't maybe have as much stress on him, and that's going to allow him to play more freely. Uh, he had a great December. He he, he really he, – in all our bowl prep and all the scrimmage and stuff, he really did a nice job. So, with him, it's continuing pre-snap identification and then post-snap, all right, is making his decision-making. And that's – he's made strides, but that's what we're really focused on in the spring. In there, it's all gonna be defensive backs, hybrid yeah, backs. it will until they're getting some twelve personnel. Then we'll play. We'll, we'll add a linebacker, but it'll be it'll it'll be one of those guys that are like we can slide out and we could play Trey Lathan out there if we go if we're getting a twelve or twenty one personnel yeah. look. Does that make sense? More. No, that's kind of what I was getting. I'm yeah. Confused by this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we've got more bodies now, Mike, so we'll be able to match personnel a little bit more than we have in the past. It's a luxury, I got you. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. um, off season stuff, you're you're comparing where you are with your peers in the conference. Like I can remember you talking about your height and weight relative mm -hmm. to the rest of the conference. Your conference is very different now. Like what type of scouting or analytical work, I guess, have you done? Just yeah. trying to figure out your surroundings and, and what you have around you now. Yeah, I think that 
Well, first of all, this is probably a bigger topic. I think we got to be careful because let's let's use Utah as an example. Utah probably over the last several years has actually had as much or maybe more success than some of the teams that are leaving our conference. You know, so like I'm not sure how much different our league will be. Um, there's some new faces in there, um, but it's going to be super super competitive. Um, but I think from a, like a body type. And what we're trying to get to, where maybe we're not totally there, but we're much closer, especially from a length and weight standpoint, than we have been in the past. Coach Dooley from spring practice. Um, obviously, the, the Big 12 NFL Combine is right around the corner, and one of the players that will be participating for WVU is Zach Frazier. Um, just kind of walk us through what do you think an NFL organization is going to get if they do select Zach or they do sign? Zach um, in the offseason? Well, they're going to get a great teammate, tremendous human being, first and foremost. Um, and that's not everybody, but that's him. And you're going to get somebody that has a, a work ethic, both in the film room, weight room, on the practice field that's that's unmatched. And um, I firmly believe like he's going to be a starter in the, in the National Football League from year one and for as long as he is, is physically able to play. Um, and I think he's uh, uh, worthy of, of a very early draft pick. Um, he's uh, both – he's got physical tools, plays great levers. His hands are extremely strong. Um, mentally, he – schematically, he's as advanced as anybody that's in his class. Um, and so he's going to be physically and mentally ready to go play at the highest level. So um, that's, probably, that's probably a good start. A um, couple other things I was going to, if y'all had any, you can, we'll, I'll take some questions, just some things I wanted to hit on before I, I talked about Garrett. Um, access wise for you all, we'll do it very similar to what we did last spring. If you remember, uh, Monty would send out at the start of the week. Uh, we're on a little bit different schedule. We don't have just a normal rhythm. Um, this stuff has gotten so crazy, man. I tried to keep our guys and our staff free on a couple more weekends than what we've had in the past. So we've got some Monday, Wednesday, Friday weeks, and then we've got some Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday weeks. Not going back-to-back -back days at any point, um, but he'll get to you in the front of the week. You'll get access. Um, I've said this in the past, like our guys like having you out there, and so you'll get access and get, get uh, what you need done. Um, I want to mention this um, from a promotion standpoint for a second. We're doing a um, – not we are, but the Country Roads Trust is doing a fantasy camp on, um, I think, April 5th and 6th, the first weekend there, and doing it during spring practice. And really this is the uh, the inaugural, but what I hope it turns into is kind of a, almost a reunion weekend for some of our former players. Um, you know, we've got five guys that are coming back, excited about them. Uh, it's a and it's a it's a neat opportunity for our fans. Um, I know a couple of my family members are using it as gifts for 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 individuals to send to it. I know a couple of corporations are using it for gifts or for employees. And so um, it's our inaugural one, but something I'm excited about. Another thing is the um, all of our people here have been on me about social media. All right, so um, I'm kind of I've kind of been anti for a while, but. So I'm gonna have a return to social media, and uh, and so I'm not I'm not I'm not going Lane. All right, I'm not going. Uh, even though he's he's he is a good follow. He is a good follow. Credit to him. But uh, but what we're gonna do through my social media stuff is give some behind the scenes access, um, some behind the scenes kind of getting to know the people, both our players and uh, and some of our support people that that really kind of make this whole organization go. We're gonna give some behind behind the scenes and really highlight people um, more than more than we do on some of our other channels. So we're going to do that. Um, anybody else have questions? Yeah, Mike. New contract? Yeah, you know, I think that was, uh, you know, Ren and I worked on that for, for a good bit. Um, I think most of what, you, what you've seen is, is pretty accurate. Um, you know, my family and, and I – We've enjoyed our time here. We want to continue to build this and and, and do it in the right way. Um, I think it's it's a uh, it's fair to both sides, and so I'm I'm excited about it. And it's probably as much as I'll say about it. You did give money. Yeah, I don't say give money. More money is in the pool for assistant mm -hmm. coaches. How, how, 
that was obviously important to you. Why did yeah. you want to do that? Well, I just, I just think it's important. You know, I think that um, – I think in, in, in leadership – is you don't want to ever ask somebody to do something that you wouldn't do. Um, and I think you're investing in people, and so they need to understand uh, the important level, importance level of it. And so um, that was kind of the decision-making behind that. So one other question about Zach. Um, from whenever you first took the job at WVU and you saw mm -hmm. Zach for the first time to where he ended his career last, last season, where do you think he made the biggest transition and not only his game, but just who he was as an, as an individual? Well, the biggest jump he made is his, his ability to communicate. Um, you know, he can get up here. This isn't his natural element, but he can get up here and, and, and communicate in a, in a press setting. He can get up in front of his teammates and talk. Um, he, could, he can get in front of a position meeting. Um, Got very good feedback on his on his meetings with the NFL personnel. Um, I think that's his biggest growth. You know, that's probably what you weren't looking for. You were looking for something on the field. Um, you know, if you talk about on the field, you know, he never played center in high school, and so um, as a soft, you know, as a sophomore, junior, and then his fourth year, you know, his snaps got increasingly better, and and that was something that he never had to do, and so that's something too that I think. Uh, improved. He's always been a natural strong guy. He's always played with great leverage, and I think that goes to his wrestling background. Um, and then his football knowledge, and and I think that was through um, our staff here, but also just him being diligent and working on it um, and understanding what defenses were doing. And um, we probably did as good a job um, if I uh, as I've ever been around is getting our people on the most dangerous defensive threats, and he's making those identifications. Anybody else? All right. Thank you all.